<laughs> Didn't have any wheels, so I used dice. Good morning, my friends. It's your friendly neighborhood medical student. My name is Odysseus Lay, and my voice sounds a little off. I'm probably a little sick, but I had a little free time, and I'm here. I'm joined today with my good friend, the plant, and um, a little tropical environment, you know, in the spirit of the video that we're going to be going over today. And talking about that, today we're going to be watching Dr. Stone, episode on the anime. I'm going to be watching the full episode. I'm going to I'm going to pick and choose the parts that I think are most scientifically inclined, and I'm going to, number one, Verify the information. Number two, give a little bit more context in the parts that I think deserve it. Go make sure to watch the episode first. Come back and then walk with me in the forest of science. So we're in the forest. <laughs> I'm a one take kind of guy now. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's watch the first clip. <laughs> I like the animation already. Alright, so it got, goes over, the first clip goes over two very important things. Pheromones and love potions. So, pheromones are something that's been studied wildly, in, particularly in animals, seen mostly in insects, right? So they believe that it's primarily a way that insects communicate. It's this chemical that they secrete and it acts like a hormone. But instead of acting as a hormone to the body itself, it acts as a mind manipulation hormone. <laughs> it affects members of the same species. So there are many different types of hormones, uh, pheromones, sorry. They are uh, modulators, primers, uh, releasers, and in this anime in particular, this is what it's referring to. The releaser is the one that's associated with the sexual arousal with the attraction of the opposite sex, right? So if you're trying to mate, you're trying to produce, if you're trying to get down, that's the one you need. Now, when translating this information to humans, uh, is a little more controversial because some scientists believe that it's 100% fact while others are still on the skeptical part of it. Because it hasn't been kind of impossible to, to exactly identify a pheromone in the human body. Uh, although there are a lot of studies like the, that show how women subconsciously uh, sync up their menstrual cycles when they're together and certain things like that, but still, you know, it's not 100% confirmed yet so keep that in mind and the next part is love potion and who doesn't like a good love potion uh if you go by the scientific scientific part of a love potion you know you go with the pheromones oxytocin pills uh, testosterone patches boring stuff right but if you currently look up what is a love potion or you look up the recipe for a love potion you're gonna see that all these weird online uh creepy little pages have this uh wine nuts fruits but what you realize is that something that a lot of these components have in common is that they are what are believed to be aphrodisiacs so an aphrodisiac now is this organic usually an organic co component that you ingest and has an effect in your body to increase your sexual drive or in other words your libido traditionally you know you have chocolates and you have nuts and you have a lot of fruits that are thought to be aphrodisiacs now the science behind this sadly enough it's a little wishy-washy there is not a lot of scientific uh, imperial evidence that actually support that there you do actually get an increase in libido from eating certain fruits and vegetables. Now, there are some that have particularly scientific evidence that possibly can support it, like Yingo Biloa, Yingseng, Maka, Tribulus, and although they have some support, they also have complications. They do have physiological changes in your body, so you have to be careful, not only with what it can do to you, but also the interaction of drugs they can have. Uh, Yingo Biloa, for example, has been associated with potential bleeding, while Yingseng has been associated with hormone-sensitive uh, cancers. So overall, just always consult a professional. Looking at love potions from the past, you know, they're, they're crazy. So they had a little bit of, you know, your wife's scalp in there, that a little bit of bone ashes and your puppy fur and, you know, and anything else they could possibly find with some sort of crazy ritual behind it. Something interesting about them, there's one that I read about which, which consisted of making a cake for the person that you want, and then you rub it around all the sweaty orifices you have in your body, and then, you know, you give it to them, you have them ingested, and then they fall in love, right? It, but if you think about it, that comes back to pheromones, what we talked about previously. And this, it's interesting how the idea of that already kind of existed, consciously or subconsciously. But overall, go ahead and make a love potion. Get some berries and cherries and find that person that you've been, you know, obsessed with for the last seven, eight years and you've been following them every corner of the hallway and you've been stalking their face. <clears throat> and, um, you know, just make sure it's safe. Make sure you're not giving them anything toxic. And uh, sure that as long as they consent to it, why not, right? I, I retract that. Don't be giving people stuff. Buy them some water and pumpkin bread. 
Not my work. Tada no gasoline da. Pet bottle no cap kara sezei shita. Polyethylene no bunshi kozo kanae ro baga. Gasoline no nagasa ni tanka suiso butta gitte ru dake da. Miria wakan da ro. Iya wakaran. Wakaran te. So here the anime kind of just slid in a little quick fact, but it actually brings up a massive issue that we're currently facing, which is plastic. Either we're throwing it away or recycling it, and or the fact that it just ends up in our oceans for some crazy reasons, people just be considerate. Um, we have this problem with plastic. So the idea that from plastic comes from crude oil, and from crude oil you get plastic, from plastic you could potentially turn it into back into some sort of uh, fuel, because pl plastic and gas look very similar, as you can see here. And uh, they are essentially just these hydrogen carbon compounds. Then if you could rearrange it, or cut off, like it says, cut off a couple of hydrogens, so you could actually turn it into back into some potential uh, fuel to be used in our world. There are some people who, call who are against the idea because they are saying that, that you're still maintaining to use uh, fossil fuels. You should be using that time and energy and money to try to look for a new resource rather than staying with what we're using. Uh, while others are saying it's more cost effective, it's more efficient, and it, pro and it solves problems of, of plastic usage. So, I mean, I'll leave it up to you guys. How easy it is to do, not at all. Methods are still varying, and the idea is just to put plastic in it extremely like hot water, like 700 Fahrenheit. Sometimes you add an enzyme, sometimes you don't. And then it's going to turn into this liquid form, and that liquid form could potentially maybe be used as some sort of fuel. Now, don't start grinding up plastic and put it in your gas tank. Because uh, you're going to end up walking everywhere you go and they're going to call you thunder dies and then your pants aren't going to fit very well and you know, just now. Next clip! Alright, I'm not going to go too much into this because I don't want the video to be, to be too long, although it probably will be. So I talk too much, but the, just think about being isolated for hundreds of thousands, for thousands of years in this like non-movable state. You know, like I, I, I honestly question how anybody, anybody can come out there mentally sane. There's like the poker player who like bet a hundred thousand dollars they could be locked into it in a dark room for thirty days. Okay, yeah. Uh, Twenty days later, I mean, he, my man didn't know his own name. All right, he didn't know where he was. He didn't know anything. So it, it obviously takes a massive toll in terms of anxiety, paranoia, hallucinations to have to be deprived from human interaction, which is what we are and what we need. Are they no? Hmm. Komori no fun kara umareta kiseki no mizu. Shousan de. Nani? Shousan ka? Tena. Okay, so this is when things get good, right? This is like the big reveal of the first episode, and the, kind of this is when science gets a little fluffy. Yeah, I, I said fluffy. <laughs> so the question is, what is bat guano? And to make it very simple for you guys, bat guano is poop. It's bat poop. Also seen in seabirds because of a particular dye they also they also have, which eat a lot of insects, and the poop becomes magical. And this poop has been found to be superfood for plants because it's very high in nitrogen phosphate and potassium and somehow some way this this combination of these three components uh, just help fertilize soil extremely well where crops are just growing exponentially so it doesn't get eroded and it just tastes nice and healthy and it's honestly one of the best organic ways to fertilize your soil so back in the day like people were going crazy for this kind of thing you know this, this was this was the it. like uh, you got parents selling their kids for an ounce of this stuff you were in a real farm you didn't have something in your backyard uh, you know Britain was like buying two million tons in, 19, in the 1840s. Uh, US was like, I'm not staying behind from this, you know, jumped on. So people were going crazy for this. Now it started going down when the Haber process kicked in because of synthetic uh, fertilizer started coming out. But um, it was honestly some, some magical stuff. Now the question is, how do you get nitric acid from bat poop? And this is when things get interesting. So in this miracle cave, we have somehow poop gave you this nitric acid, right? So the question is, where does nitric acid come from? So one way is that you get nitric dioxide plus some atmospheric water will give you your HNO3, your nitric acid. Where does this come from? Well, you usually get like uh, thunderstorms with massive amount of, of lightning and that lightning will produce heat and that heat is what's going to give you nitric dioxide. Also, burning of fossil fuels. And this is where, you know, pollution comes into, and it'll give you your nitric, uh, nitric acid, and then this is where acid rain comes into play. So, side note. Now, 
Another, another thing that could possibly be done is bacteria. It has been found that in certain locations that are very high in nitrogen, uh, such as a cave that has nitro uh, boop, poop, uh, you have these nitrogen eating bacteria that also eat ammonium, and then they could possibly turn into some nitrogen and ammonium into nitric. But you're not necessarily going to see nitric acid concentration dripping from the roof of the cave. So in one particular paper that I read, they tested different parts of the cave and they found that many parts of the cave had high levels of nitrogen and nitric acid. And one particular part was water that was dripping from the roof of the cave. Oh, that sounds like miracle acid to me. Now the idea is that you get rain and then this rain is going to pass by uh, mountains and soil and grass and eventually you're going to get to your cave right and then the water might seep in through here and also it's going to collect now this water the stripping could be number one acid rain and could be high nitric acid or it could also be uh, all the the minerals and the rocks and the, and the soil have converted into nitric acid and therefore it's dripping from the roof of the cave so is it possible to have nitric acid dripping from the roof of the case yes it is possible now is it likely or how common it is that is a different question so now we're talking about nitro. Like the video says itself, you combine uh, ethanol, you combine alcohol with nitric acid, you get nitro. So back in the day, nitro was used for two main things. Print making and engraving. So the idea is that you get a, a plate, right? You get, a, you get like your armor plate from back in the day and then you just cover it in some sort of wax that doesn't erode because of the acid. Engrave whatever it is that you want to engrave, right? So, uh, bird poop. So essentially you write out poop while removing the parts of the wax. You drop the nitrile, and this is gonna erode the surface part of the metal, right? So it's gonna just erode it away. So you're gonna be able to engrave whatever it is you wanna write. Now, same thing, now you drop a little bit of ink in this new uh, grooves that you wrote out, and you got kind of a print. もしよ、ブドウってワインの元になるんじゃ。いや、あるじゃねえか、デカブツ。ああ。<laughs> I'm not gonna go too much into how you make wine, but essentially you uh, pick the grapes, you crush them, you add your yeast, you can stir it to help the yeast out, the yeast is gonna eat the sugar, and it's gonna turn the sugar into alcohol, and that's where you get the alcoholic content from it, and uh, you, cl you, cl you clarify it, and then you store it and you age it, like that's... It's pretty much wine in, in, in a nutshell. So something you want to keep in mind is that you don't distill wine, you drink wine as it is. When you distill it, you're going to concentrate the alcohol and you're going to pr pretty much turn it into a spirit. Uh, you try, you get a brandy. You get cognac, you get grappa, and uh, these are just already th different types of classifications of an alcohol. You want to put the mixture in a, in a pot, you want to boil it, and then that those vapors eventually goes into an apparatus. You want the vapors get cooled, and you collect the parts that evaporated, that boiled and evaporated quickest, which usually is alcohol. Ends up being classified, which you don't really need to know, but heads hearts and tails. Those are the three uh, different orders of uh, the evaporations collected. The idea is you're evaporating alcohol from your mixture to get a new liquid that is much higher in alcohol. And then now you have a new spirit. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Uh, I wish I was a little bit more medically based, but it is kind of nice to learn some, uh, something different. Uh, and it, the, the anime does a fantastic job at honestly dropping so many different facts and knowledge all throughout very quickly, very easily. And if you listen, if you read, if you stop and pause, you could probably learn something new. So with that, take something from the video and go and have a good day. If you like this kind of video, you can click right here. It is my first video I ever made. It's anime and medicine. If you enjoy that, there you go.